Over the past three days now, this stock is up from $6 per share all the way to a high of $45 per share. That's a gain of over 600%. So if you are trading small caps, you probably know what it is. If you're not trading small caps, you should watch this to learn about it because there is some definitely amazing potential to trade this stuff. I was able to get into it today. I bought in at $30 per share and I sold at $44 per share, which is a gain of about $14 per share. Absolutely amazing move. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly how I found my entry at 30 bucks, how I sold at 44 bucks, and more importantly, how I was able to have the patience to hold all day for that move to happen. So if you enjoy this lesson, hit the like button for the YouTube algo and let's jump right into it. I think it's reasonable to just start off with K-A-L-A -A, since this is obviously... Uh, the most important one, I would say, it's been running for the past few days. We've been trying to trade it for the past few days. And I was finally able to take a trade on it today with, with a very simple uh, setup, which, you know, this was like the same setup that I was trying to trade yesterday and it didn't work out and I sold it for the break even. And today, the same exact strategy came around. I had the confidence to just take it again and it actually worked out really well. I got in in the $30 area. I didn't get my full size, which I'll break down in a bit more, but I was able to sell a partial profit right into that 4463 line, making about 14 bucks per share on that trade. And that was obviously a very nice way to wrap up the week. Um, so let's just kind of break this down, right? Let's just first go over the catalyst once again for anyone who, who missed it. So they had announced on the 20th that they received FDA acceptance of their IND application for their treatment of PCED, which is some type of eye disorder. And obviously the market loved that news and this thing just kind of rallied like crazy, right? You can see day one, it was at about six bucks, day hitting 45 bucks. That is how big is that gain uh, ever since day one? Up about 600%, so, you know, a pretty good response to that catalyst, right? And so over the past few days, we've just been kind of watching it and, you know, trying to plan some sort of entry. Obviously, I really wish that I was able to get into it on day one off that entry at six, which I talked about in the webinar from, from uh, the 28th. But now today, uh, the main thing I was seeing was, okay, this is once again gapping up. You can see in pre-market, it hit a high of about $45. And to me, just using basic support resistance, you know, technical analysis, the main thing I saw was this. So this is what the hourly chart looks like on Thinkorswim. And you can see that, you know, the previous resistance on the hourly line chart is right there around 2653. So that's like the main level. But because this is a bit more of a hyped up stock, it has a lot of trading volume and a lot of range. Usually on plays like this, I like to consider where is the actual wick at? And you can see that yesterday's high of day was right at around 30.49. And we also have the extra bonus to go to the daily chart real quick. You can see that that area near 30 bucks is a previous level of support where the stock has bounced there. You can see right here, it bounced there before having this big spike up. And then on the way back down, it bounced there a few times before finally breaking down. So that is definitely a level that the chart is respecting and traders in this stock are respecting that line. And seeing that was also, you know, pretty much yesterday's high of day gives us that kind of extra confidence that, yeah, it is a level that people are respecting. So basically what I did when I planned this trade this morning was instead of trying to size all of my size at that 26.53 level off the hourly chart, which was down here, the main plan I had was, okay, well, we can just use this area as kind of just a big zone of support, right? This whole area can be support. So I planned my trade by using two different entries. I had one entry just based off of that previous day high wick in the 30.50s, and then the rest of my size was down in the 2644s. And as you can see, I didn't get my full size on this trade. It ended up holding that $30 level pretty well, but that was okay, right? I didn't want to add back into it as it was holding support because of just the way that I calculated my risk. It was based off of me having that other entry down at 2644. So basically for me, whenever I choose to split my entries up like that, if I only get one fill, that's just what I'm sticking with. I'm not going to try to size into it at the higher price. I just leave it as is because 
it's just easier for me that way, basically. But then through the morning, you can see it was holding that level, you know, very well. And it was really, you know, just trapping shorts through this morning consolidation. There was a lot of short sellers trying to attack this thing at many points of the day. You can see market open had a nasty rejection, big top wick. There were definitely short sellers attacking there. And also here into this VWAP bounce, there was obviously short sellers attacking there too, right? Hoping that it's going to reject that VWAP and then go lower. But to me, because overall the chart is still bullish, right? Like, you know, this thing has been clearly stepping up over the past few days. It, it's clearly trapping shorts and you really can't say it's weak until it fails to keep holding that previous resistance as new support. So even though it looked weak intraday, you know, just with this morning sell-off, in the big picture, it is still very much strong. So I was just kind of holding through this. I had a lot of confidence with just holding the position. And then we ended up seeing it do that nice big squeeze through VWAP and then it halted upwards. If you look at the one in the chart, you can see that it just squeezed up like right away. It went from 33 bucks all the way to 39 bucks in like two minutes and then it halted. So that obviously was looking very strong. Now I definitely had very high hopes of this thing actually squeezing and making new highs because of such big potential for there to be shorts trapped in this. But because I have my rules in place, one of my main rules in trading is I always have to lock in partial profits into known levels of resistance. If you look back at this, um, this hourly chart, you can see that we had resistance set at 44 bucks from pre-market. So it is my job as a trader, if I'm in this position, I need to make sure that I'm selling into that locking in some partial profits just in case it does hold as resistance. Obviously, you know, just me and my emotions, I'm hoping it can go higher because then obviously it's more money for me. But at the same time, you know, just focusing on the rules, I have to follow that plan of locking in that partial into the $44 area. So I left the limit sell there as it was halting upwards. And you can see this thing just, it just spiked up, tapped 45 bucks. It filled my limit sell. I can pretty much just reject it there like hardcore, and then it sold off all the way back down, broke through a view up, and then it was kind of consolidating in the 33s. So now with this trade, right, because I've already locked in a partial profit, now it's just kind of a target or stop trade, right? As long as it keeps holding support, I'm gonna wait to see if it can actually get that strength to break out higher. And at the moment in after hours, it is looking a bit weak, uh, but because I have already, you know, paid myself for this trade, a very nice gain there of about, you know, $14 per share. And because my entry is all the way down just off of 30 bucks, I am comfortable with just holding this as long as it holds 30 bucks. So I will be swinging it overnight. Yes, there is definitely some offering risk, right? We saw a few offerings on like both HOTH today had an offering overnight. And that one that it dumped down massively. We also saw a pretty big offering on PALI. It dropped from 640s down to four bucks. And because KALA is a biotech, there is always that offering risk. At the same time, you know, this chart to me is still overall bullish. And I feel like there could be a lot of traders who are just, they're afraid of that risk overnight. So they're not holding. And you know, there could be some edge to that in itself. Like if most people aren't willing to take that risk overnight, maybe that's the setup that is actually able to continue over the weekend. The market is closed on Monday. We'll just have to wait until Tuesday. So basically, as long as this keeps holding, you know, higher lows overall and looking pretty bullish, I will have the confidence to hold it until Tuesday. But yeah, overall, you know, very, very nice move. And I really want to stress the importance, especially with multi-day stocks. If like if you are a day trader, uh, make sure that you are not looking at these like this, right? Because a lot of short sellers and a lot of longs do this too, where they just look at what's happening today, right? And you can see that, you know, if you're looking at a chart like this and you have no context of where the previous levels are, yeah, this does look weak. And this is probably something that you would want to short because had a big morning rejection, it's rejecting VWAP, it doesn't look that strong. 
But if you can just zoom out, right, that's the most important thing. Just zoom out of the chart, get the actual context, and you can see, wait, you know, this looks very strong. It's holding previous resistance as new support still. There is no weakness. And that's a big mistake that so many traders make is that they zoom in so much because they want to see the price action right away. Sometimes that is your downfall because you're, you're looking too close at the price action now that you're missing out on what happened before. Uh, this level here, this 3043 line, um, like it's also a level from, like from the weekly chart. Just that, like that's just the nature of the fact that, you know, these bottoms happened on a Friday. So whether you drew this as a weekly or a daily line doesn't really matter. It's the same, same overall level, right? And, you know, usually whenever I'm using these, these daily and weekly levels, really the most important thing to me is I want to see the level be respected by the current price action, right? Because you can draw so many levels on the chart and if they're not respected, there's really no point to trade them. But because that $30 level was also respected as resistance yesterday, it just kind of just gives massive confidence that, you know what, traders are using this right now. I know it's a big picture level, so I'm going to use it too. When it comes to locking in the profits into resistance, I don't really care about seeing it be like respected that much because it's like the first time it's being tested anyways. But you know, whenever you're buying support off of a daily or weekly level, you want to see it be respected at some point first as resistance. That is almost always all right, so if you enjoyed that lesson and you stuck through the entire thing, then it probably means that you like the way that I teach and you are able to understand the concepts that I'm teaching you. If you're a new trader and you're struggling in the markets, I know that you can go out and try to learn it all by yourself. I did that same thing and it took me years to finally you know, grasp it all and make an actual system, but I want to shorten that learning curve for you. So I have a lot of free content down below. Number one, I have my one hour trading course that you can sign up for completely for free to get an actual roadmap of how to trade. And also I wanna invite you to my community of traders with a 14 day free trial. You're gonna get a course, a chat room, and you can talk to me directly and ask me questions. So I wanna help you on your journey. I know it can be very stressful, very hard to kind of figure out all the pieces, but I've already made the puzzle and I wanna give it to you solved. So if you want that content, please click the links down below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video lesson.